Some of the biggest car makers in the world have invented new technology that could save the internal combustion engine. Porsche's just painted a brand new six stroke, yeah, that's right, six stroke petrol engine that promises more power and reduced emissions. Toyota wants to start burning hydrogen to save the planet, and Ferrari is working on a new turbocharged and supercharged inline six engine, but it only works when it's upside down. Some of this stuff is pretty crazy, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWack. Porsche isn't giving up on the internal combustion engine anytime soon. It's already invested heavily in e-fuels, which are carbon neutral synthetic fuels made using carbon dioxide captured from the atmosphere. Now it's going a step further with a new six stroke internal combustion engine as shown in these new patent images. There's even a big clue hidden in the patents that could reveal which new car could use this revolutionary engine. But before I get into that, we need to talk about sock, squeeze, bang and blow. Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Sorry. These are four steps that happen inside a normal four-stroke internal combustion engine. First, the piston moves down inside the cylinder to suck in loads of fresh air. Then it moves back up to mix this air with fuel and squeeze it. A spark plug ignites the fuel on the third stroke, which causes the mixture to expand also known as bang, and push the piston down. When it comes back up on the four stroke, it blows the burnt exhaust gases out of the cylinder. Blow. This means the engine is only making power once in every four stroke cycle. However, Porsche's new engine produces power twice during a six stroke cycle. This means that each piston is helping to drive the car about 33% of the time, instead of just 25% of the time in a conventional four stroke internal combustion engine. So now what you get is suck, squeeze, bang, suck, bang, blow for each cycle. So how does it all work? Well, it's all to do with the new crankshaft design you can see in these painted images. Each piston is connected to the crankshaft via a connecting rod and two new gears. There's one small gear on the crankshaft and a larger one on the engine block itself. As the crankshaft spins, the smaller gear rotates inside the larger gear and this alters how far inside the cylinder the piston can move up or down with each revolution. In a normal four-stroke engine, the piston always reaches the same high point called top dead center and the same low point called bottom dead center. Porsche's new design allows the piston to move further up and down inside the cylinder on every third rotation. Why is this important? Because it allows Porsche's engine to suck in a little extra air and fuel while simultaneously blowing out exhaust gases. This is possible using extra vents called scavenging ports cut into the bottom of each cylinder. During the first three strokes, the piston doesn't drop below these ports. It just sucks in air, compresses it, and burns it like a normal four-stroke engine. But on the fifth stroke, the special gears allow the piston to drop below these ports for a brief moment. This means fresh air and fuel can be forced into the cylinder while the exhaust gases are pushed out of the exhaust valve. As a result, Porsche's engine is ready to compress a fresh air and fuel mixture more quickly than a normal engine. And the sooner it can burn more fuel and air, the more power it can make. This cycle also has the potential to reduce particulate and carbon monoxide emissions because it can use the second combustion stroke to burn off any fuel that was left behind in the cylinder. So which kind of car will this engine appear in? Well, it probably won't be an SUV. Porsche has already revealed the new electric Macan, and it's also working on an electric flagship that'll be even bigger than the Cayenne. We already know that the next Boxster and Cayman are going to be electric too, so it won't be a small mid-engine sports car either. But there's a very interesting line in the patent that could reveal everything. This new engine has more moving parts than a regular internal combustion engine, and it's going to be more difficult to balance the vibrations from all these cylinders moving in complicated directions. But Porsche has already done the maths, and it's calculated that the new design would work best in engines with three, six, nine, or 12 cylinders. Basically, any multiple of three. The Panamera and Cayenne both come with V6 engine options, but these cars will probably transition into pure electric models in the future. So I think the obvious choice for a six cylinder six stroke engine is a future 911. After all, Porsche is already using its updated 911 GTS as a test bed for turbo hybrid technology. So why not use the 911 to test out a six stroke flat six engine too. The potential emissions and power advantages of a six stroke engine could make sure Porsche's iconic sports car keeps internal combustion engine power for as long as possible. In fact, I've actually spoken to some people at Porsche and they've told me that the 911 will be the last Porsche to go electric, if it ever does. However, if you thought Porsche's new engine was a bit weird, 
It's nothing compared to what Ferrari's been working on. It's all to do with hydrogen power and it's gonna absolutely blow your mind. But before we get to that, I need to tell you about what happens when you burn hydrogen. Several car makers have been experimenting with this technology as a replacement for fossil fuels, including Toyota, which has built several GR Yaris and GR Corolla prototypes that are powered exclusively by hydrogen. And Alpine has built an endurance racing concept powered by hydrogen combustion engine called the Alpine Glow. That sounds like a breakfast cereal. Anyway, these cars don't have a hydrogen fuel cell like in the Toyota Mirai. They have relatively normal internal combustion engines, which burn hydrogen instead of petrol. In fact, the only difference between this GR Yaris and my GR Yaris is the fuel system and the big hydrogen tank in the boot. The 1.6 litre turbocharged three cylinder engine is pretty much identical. So why bother going to all this effort then? Well, burning hydrogen produces no carbon dioxide. Hydrogen combustion does produce nitrogen oxide emissions, which can be harmful. But the other notable byproduct from these engines is just water vapor and that isn't harmful at all. Okay so hydrogen filling stations are still very rare. There are currently fewer than 20 of them in the UK but Toyota believes that heavy industry and hydrogen powered commercial vehicles could pave the way for mass adoption of the technology in private cars. Hydrogen furnaces have been suggested as a replacement for gas and coal furnaces used in the steel industry and hydrogen could potentially fuel future cargo ships and heavy duty transport such as trucks because it has a greater energy density than batteries and takes up less space on board. Meanwhile, Ferrari is also confident that hydrogen has a place in the future because it has painted it this. It's a supercar with a hydrogen fueled internal combustion engine, but it looks nothing like anything I've ever seen before. Okay, you should ignore the silhouette, which looks like an old F430. That's just for illustration purposes. The really interesting stuff is happening underneath the skin. This Ferrari is powered by a brand new turbocharged and supercharged inverted inline six engine. I'll get into the crazy details of Ferrari's new turbo superchargers in a bit, but first, why is this engine upside down? Well, it's all to do with packaging. Mid-engine sports cars and supercars don't have much room to spare. You certainly couldn't squeeze some high-pressure hydrogen tanks besides the V8 engine in an SF90. But Ferrari reckons it can solve this problem by arranging all the cylinders in a single line and flipping the whole engine on its head. This way, the narrow engine block can fit between two spherical hydrogen tanks and the wide cylinder head and manifolds can slide underneath. This means the whole engine block can be mounted low in the car's chassis, which helps lower the center of gravity and improve the overall handling. I don't even want to think about how difficult it's going to be to change a spark plug, but never mind. You see, that's not the only strange thing about this new Ferrari engine. Ferrari has also invented a new way to combine turbochargers and superchargers to eliminate lag and make more top end power. There are a few different designs in Ferrari's paintings, including this one that shows a twin turbo system that's been split in half, although not in the way you'd expect. The exhaust turbines are attached to electrical generators. As these spin, they transmit power to electric motors, which spin compressors to force air into the engine. This way, the turbines and compressors can be mounted in different places around the engine bay. This helps make more space for hydrogen tanks, and it helps keep the cold air intake away from the hot exhaust. Colder air is more dense, which helps produce more power. But Ferrari has developed this idea into something even more strange. These designs show a twin turbo system that can be directly driven by the engine or gearbox through a series of drive shafts and clutches. By using the engine to spin the turbo compressors, they will always produce some boost. Once the revs climb and the turbos can spin on their own, the clutches then decouple them from the engine to reduce parasitic losses. But that's not all because Ferrari says the system can work in reverse. It can re-engage the clutches at high revs, so the torque produced by the spinning turbos can help drive the wheels directly. Now, all this sounds super strange, but it's all to do with regulating turbo boost pressure. As everyone knows, too much boost can be a bad thing. To avoid overboosting the engine at high revs, a wastegate bypasses the turbo and dumps the excess gas straight into the exhaust. This new Ferrari engine doesn't have a wastegate valve, it controls the boost pressure by selectively engaging the clutch that connects the turbos with the engine and the gearbox. This stops the turbo spinning too fast and producing too much boost pressure. It's similar to the system in the new 911 GTS hybrid that uses an electrical generator on the turbo to reduce turbine speed and control the boost pressure. This Ferrari design uses a mechanical linkage and clutch instead, but the end result is similar. Ferrari doesn't want to have to wait for hydrogen powered cars to start using these turbo designs. They could appear much sooner on a normal petrol powered super supercar. 
but which one? Well, the new SF90 replacement is expected to use a very similar twin turbo V8 engine as the outgoing model, but it's possible Ferrari could revamp its hybrid system and use this as an opportunity to show off some new hybrid electric turbos. However, I think it's more likely this technology could debut on a replacement for the 296 GTB, but that car is only three years old, so its successor is still many years off. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Click on the video windows for some more videos and on the CarWow logo to see how much you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.